Welcome back, my duelist friends. Casual duelist here. It is Thursday, and it's finally back to making another like fan requested deck. Um, lately, I've gotten a lot of requests about like, what can you do with flame swordsman? Now, granted, it's it's pretty much like a couple of viewers. I, I've gotten a couple of emails about this, like, why isn't there a flame swordsman? Uh, you know, deck profile. Um, will we get it with the next set with the Streets of Rage? Well, I'll tell you what, how about we just do one right now, and uh, because this one was actually so much fun, I'm going to do this, we're going to do the tier two, the what you can take to the tournaments today, and then tomorrow, we're just going to kind of like ramp it up and, you know, do one of the casual builds where we don't focus on the ban list, and so we're going to enjoy that, so let's get you guys a deck list, right? So first things first, you guys got to use the Christine skill, Fusion Party, now, and take note, mine is not the errated version. Mine is the original printing. Um, so I'm going to read it like it isn't. So activate this skill during the main phase. Once per duel, you can fusion summon one fusion monster from the extra deck by discarding one card and then using monsters from the hand and field as fusion material. So remember, you do have to discard a card even if you're using this older version of this. Basically, you're going to turn one card in your hand into the polymerization spell card. It's why this is so good. It's why this is so much fun. But that's how we're going to have to run this, okay? So just because mine doesn't say that doesn't mean I don't have it somewhere else here in the Dueling Dungeon uh, with the up-to-date copies when they re-release the skills as part of the one of the box sets. Now, monster-wise, we need at least one of the two materials. So again, if you guys have read a Flame Swordsman card lately, we know that you'll need either Flame Manipulator or Masaki the Legendary Swordsman. Well, technically you need both, but today we only need one. We need one because, click that back into focus, we are going to be using Fusion Substitution because it's a tech deck and you guys ought to be able to have fun with it. So first rule is, got to have three Misaki. Now why do we choose three Misaki, not three of the Flame Manipulator? It's very simple. You guys will figure it out here very shortly because you guys are all super smart. Um, next up, three Goddess of the Third Eye. And round it out to nine monsters with three Versago. These six cards all have the same ability. They may be used as a substitution for any one fusion material monster that is named on a fusion card. However, the rest of the materials must be the correct materials. So I may not use Versago in Goddess uh, plus the fusion party skill to fuse these two into the card. However, I can discard one of them to count as the polymerization. The other one is a material and then Misaki. That's what we're going for. Now, how do we guarantee Masaki over Flame Manipulator? Because we can still add a copy of Reinforcement of the Army into the deck. Um, now, this is going to count against part of our limits. This is going to be our one of. And then moving into the rest of the spells, you'll see that we use our three ofs pretty rapidly. Uh, one of my famous things, one of the things I just always do because it's just in me, is I always use the two Books of Moon. And again, this is going to help us survive real quick. But again, it's going to help us be able to manipulate things once Flame Swordsman's still in the field. Because you got to remember, our Bernie boy only has 1,800 base value. So he is going to be a little bit on the underwhelming side, especially when things like Cyber Dragon can just pop out of the hand and immediately class him by 300. So we just got to make sure our boy is safe. Next, we got to take care of some back rows. So again, we're going to use our third three of with the Cosmic Cyclone. And we're going to double down by having a Night Beam. This way we have a similar effect, but this way we're not running into the same limitations. Um, so this is good. Now, part of how we keep our boy alive once he's on the field, you gotta give him some tools. So we're gonna give him the fusion weapon. Now, he is a level 5 fusion, and again, we'll just put him in frame real quick so that you guys can see that. Um, so again, level 6 or lower, he totally meets the criteria. Two, technically, that's him on the card because of the Dark Flare Knight fusion with the Dark Magician. And uh, what this is going to do is it's going to give him an extra 1,500 to his attack and his defense. This is going to bring him up to 33 by 31. And yes, it can stack if you play both of them on a single copy. So yes, big thumbs up right there, right? Um, and that makes him a little less easy to punch in the face. Next, we're going to move to traps. And I love traps, and I love the fact that we have so many cards that are duplicates, because it means, for the most part, once we play our Flame Swordsman, it's about keeping him alive. So let's also use Rising Energies. 
And uh, during playtest, I actually got to do this with Masaki. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. So the way this one's going to work is you discard a card, target a face-up monster card on the field, and the target will gain 1,500 attack until the end of the turn. So again, my Masaki was able to charge in and take down a monster way larger than himself. But again, this will still allow Flame Swordsman to outclass everything past Blue Eyes. Um, this will get him over 3,000. Um, so again, pretty cool. Plus, it doesn't need too much invest. But this one generically protects everybody. If you guys wanted to change anything in this deck so far, what I might do is recommend like a third Rising Energy over a Fusion Weapon. And then choose uh, something else here that also generically helps out the strategy. Maybe even Dust Tornado. Uh, last two cards in this deck are going to be Waking the Dragon. Um, and again, once the opponent sees Rising Energy activate, once they start seeing us flip Book of Moon, Cosmic Cyclone, stuff like this, um, there is going to be this predilection towards destroying cards in my back row or banishing them through their own means, whether it's, you know, Nobleman of Extermination, Nightbeam, Cosmic Cyclone, um, not, you know, whatever. In, insert card effect here, Breaker. Um, my big point here is this is going to allow us to just skip the whole need for the fusion party and go straight into our boy flame swordsman as well as the other monsters lurking within the extra deck. And, uh, again, that's just so satisfying. However, you must remember it, it's just a, it's a special summon. Not that we're using any form of resurrection here, but, um, it's just one of those like little things you might need to worry about once. Um, but there it is. There's the main deck. That's the first 20 cards. Go ahead, screenshot, pause plus notes, whichever one you guys got to do. I'll be right back with the rest of the deck. Just one moment. All right. So the extra deck first, because this is, this is probably the most fun is I get to go. Yeah, I'm playing three copies of Flame Swordsman because honestly I can board all three copies because again, there were two waking the dragons plus the one shot of our skill equaling three shots at Flame Swordsman. Um, is he the best boss monster in the game? Probably not. Is he the most nostalgic and does it make me feel cool as heck when I pop him to the field? Absolutely, 10,000%. Um, again, basic stats, 5-star warrior, fire attribute, uh, 18 by 16. Nothing too crazy. However, in the future, we may be getting more support for him. Joey's getting a new deck uh, in the next set. They've already said Flame Swordsman is going to be a secret rare in that set. Guys, that means... Big brain time, okay? We've had, let's see, we had the first box set, we had the Battle City, then we had the GX, then we had the midterms, then we had the next GX. It's four box sets. And in all four of these box sets, not once have they released, and, and, and I'm going to correct myself here real quick, there are six exceptions to this rule. Uh, only six cards in four sets were released as a secret rare without being a part of the main set. But those six cards were the Ancient Egyptian God cards, Obelisk, Slifer, and Raw, and the three Sacred Beast cards, Haman, Uriah, and Raviel. But they were guaranteed in every foil pack. So they were a part of the set, but they were never meant to be a common part of the set. They were meant to be a secret rare part of the set. So for somebody like Flame Swordsman to be announced as a secret rare in the set also means Flame Swordsman has to be somewhere within the set. Big brain time, right? So I think it is fair to assume that part of Joey's deck is going to be using this guy. And I get to come back here with less than a month till release. And I get to make another Flame Swordsman build, or at least an update to this one. Because we should also have an updated ban list. Again, if the ban list doesn't touch anything here, then chances are, unless there's some improvement, some quality of life changes in the cards that come out... I may not touch this again for a little while. But for right now, three Flame Swordsmen in my extra deck feels fun. And then I had to pick and choose what I thought were the best three. So we went with the most powerful, the one that could shut down the opponent's side of the field, and the one that stops the opponent from moving entirely. Again, could you play other ones? Yeah, you know what? Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, still not a common that's been released. So either you have the Ultra Rare or you don't have this card in your collection right now. Um, unless I'm mistaken and he was released in one of the promo packs, which I'm not sure of. 
Um, at which point, go ahead and substitute in your Destiny and Dragoon because I know that you guys got it. Um, but it is what it is. This is my my extra deck lineup. Side deck. Side deck is a little weird because I actually almost go back to like having a tech base here. So let's talk about it. So like first up, I'm using Dahlgren the Flame Mad Kaiju. Why? Because Kaiju need to exist every now and again. Plus, with the way that this deck is built, we can go ahead and plop him into defense mode. And then you're talking about a 1,200-point card. Like, Book of Mooning, this guy just immediately writes his, uh, just writes him right out of the show. Um, nothing in the main deck beats him, but again, with how fast and consistently we can make a Flame Swordsman. Yeah, yeah, he's done. He's, he's going to be done. Second up, you're probably not playing him without siding in your hammer shot as well. So again, you kaiju off the big cards you can't normally touch. Um, you know, you tribute the opponent's obelisk, the tormentor, can't be tr can't be targeted. Good thing we're attributing it for a summon effect. And uh then you go ahead and you just bop him with a big mallet. So boom, he's off the he's off the board. Um next up, double double on the polymerization. Because again, going game two Going game three, you may choose to get funky with a little more beatdown. Maybe you drew too, too many of certain other cards. And again, like I've taken out my fusion weapons for this before. I have taken out uh, the Waking the Dragons to do this before. It's all about you and your personal choices uh, while you're playing. It's important. This is always just a guideline, but this is something that worked for me. And then last up, I'm, I'm still I'm still stepping with the mind crushes because again, just common knowledge of your local area's meta plus the meta in the game in general is going to afford you such a large advantage using this trap card that when we do see another ban list, I I expect to see this card on that ban list. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this, um, especially especially my friends who love the Flame Swordsman. Uh, it's super iconic. It's super fun to play. So fun to play. In fact, we will be doing it like a, like I said, like a tier one uh, casual build tomorrow. And that's how it's going to be labeled. It's going to be a casual build. So it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit tougher. And it's going to show what Flame Swordsman can do if you take the restrictions off. So for now, my friends, I hope that you enjoyed this again. Um, I want you guys to not worry about doing any of the things tonight. I want you to worry about one thing today. I want you to worry about going out and having a wonderful day. I want you guys to enjoy yourselves. I know that there's something in your life that you've been putting off. Maybe it's going to the gym. Maybe it's having your favorite cup of tea. Maybe you've been trying to catch up on a show. I'm giving you permission. I'm telling you for your mental health today, at least go do the thing. Be the happiest you you can be, okay? Come back again tomorrow if you can. Check out the next version of this build. And then uh, I got a cool Yugi d d for you guys coming this Saturday. Um, so until then, I'll see you guys later. Try to have a great one, all right? See you later, buds.